Jim Hughes is not here. Uh, George Oichel. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's here. Uh, Tom Dean. Here. Tony Hamicki. Here. David. Tony. Edwards. Here. Mike Vieira. Here. Uh, Dave Drake. Here. Pete Lambruni. Here. And Paul Thompson. Here. All right. So we have six regular members and all three alternates. I will seat the three alternates. Um, first item, uh, the uh, public hearing 3.2, Lucas Kiriakos, they've asked to be continued to the Tuesday, February 15th meeting. Um, would someone make a motion to do that? So moved. Okay. All right. George. All right. Motion by Peter, second by George. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Uh, item 3.1, public hearing 3,921Z, Brian Cousins seeking a special permit in accordance with section 36B2, garages of the Weathersfield zoning regulations to construct a garage larger than permitted at 334 Walcott Hill Road. Um, and just for purpose of laying the ground rules, even though I don't see a whole lot of members of the public, the way we do the public hearings is we open it up, have a presentation by the applicant, questions from the commission members, um, any back and forth that needs to happen between the applicant and the commission. Uh, following that, we open it up to members of the public who may have questions or comments on the application. Um, give the uh, applicant an opportunity to respond to any of those questions or comments. If after that, uh, the commission believes we have enough information to make a decision on the application, we'll close the public hearing, uh, at which point there was no further public input, no further commentary from the applicant, uh, and we uh, may make a decision on the application. If after uh, the public hearing and public portion, uh, we still believe there's information that is outstanding or that we need to uh, be able to appropriately act on the application, we may continue it to a future meeting, um, but that will be clearly enunciated while we do that. So, uh, you know, everybody will know what's going on. So, Brian Cousins, um, if you're here, could you please identify yourself by name and address for the record and tell us what you would like to do? Uh, good evening, uh, Brian Cousins, 334. Wolcott Hill Road. And what I'm looking to do is um, build an attached three car garage to the back side of my home on Wolcott Hill. Uh, currently, there's a one car garage that's actually not usable. It's, it's too small by width and height. <clears throat> so um, I have uh, presented some uh, drawings for the proposed uh, garage. There'd be a small addition on the top along with a deck um, on a flat portion of the three-car garage. <clears throat> There's currently a uh, patio in that spot, which is about the same size as what this new proposal is. So um, okay. did, you, did everybody get the, um, I'm assuming you guys all got the, um, the yeah. drawings and the yeah, pops in, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, and I, I think just for orientation, um, is this going to be on the south side of your house where the driveway currently is or somewhere else? Um, it's actually on the uh, east side of the house. Well, you have to get to it on oh, either the south. Correct, correct. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, you're, you're going to, the existing driveway isn't changing. Right now, you pull down my driveway and you have to do like a J hook to get into the garage underneath the house. Now all we'll be doing is uh, pulling down the driveway and pulling left right into one of the bays. Okay, so the so the addition is on the back of the house on the side with the driveway. Correct. Okay, thank you. And um, Denise submitted a memo to us this afternoon uh, that essentially says that 
under the regulations, you're allowed 850 square feet. Um, that this is uh, proposed to be 1,100 square feet, which is why it has to come in for a special permit. Is that correct, Denise? That is correct. That is correct. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Does uh, anyone George have any here. Yep. Mr. Chairman, George, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, therefore, you're not keeping the existing garage, right? Um, it would actually remain, but it's going to be more like uh, just a storage unit. I'm going to remove the uh, seven foot door and drop it down to like a five or six foot just access door and just keep this, the snow equipment and some of my uh, tools and things in there. Okay, so you don't even consider it a really a garage any longer. Man. It's a storage area. When I bought the house, they had actually, um, there, there's a wall almost three quarters of the way down the garage. So you can't really fit a car in there. <clears throat> it's only oh, about nine, okay. it's only about nine feet deep. For all my fellow commission members, I went down and looked at it, walked the yard and uh, my attitude is what he's doing is putting on an addition. And it so happens that the, the basement uh, is the garage and he's asking for for this in the basement. And uh, yet he really, it's an addition to his house, the upper part, uh, the way that this whole yard slopes downward, so somewhat. And uh, so it accommodates this uh, underground parking of the new addition quite well, in my opinion. All right, thanks. Yeah, that, that was kind of my impression too, which was why I was trying to get confirmation as to the location. Um, does anybody else have any questions for the applicant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah David, David Drake. Uh, let's go, go ahead, whoever was that? Is that Tony? Yeah. Uh, there was Tom. Go ahead, David. Yeah, my, 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 concern, is, my concern is, uh, I mean, I like the way it looks, everything else, I understand how it works, but is the reason you had to go three and make it so big and go over the 800 square feet? Uh, well, one of the reasons was I, I have three vehicles. And the second was because I'm losing the existing patio, um, if I put a deck on the difference between the addition and the rest of the house, the deck would have hung over and I, would have, uh, I needed to do um, posts that offset past the garage. So it almost would have looked like it was an afterthought. So I actually extended the um, the garage to compensate for the addition. And there's a 12 foot deck that's going to go on a flat portion of that roof on the, the backside. I see. So originally you were thinking just the two garages, the addition, a room that had a deck off the back and then you filled it in. Correct. And the two yeah. car I need from the from the existing home to the first bay, I need seven feet clearance in order to make the swing in. So it would have had to be an oversized two to begin with. So this way yeah. it just became a, it just became a three. Yeah, how far are you, how far are you from the neighbor looking at the garage doors to the right? If I'm looking at the garage doors, so yeah. the neighbor behind me? He'd be behind you, yeah. Um, that's the car bones. We are. I mean, it's your backyard. I assume you have some distance. Uh, it is 57 feet to the property line from the. Okay. See. Okay. Okay. So you have a lot of space there. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, Tom, did you have a question? Yes. Um, a little bit of a clarification in terms of the size of the proposed uh, uh, addition. The, uh, is the total that's stated 1,100 plus square feet, uh, is that inclusive of the total volume that will be enclosed in, in terms of uh, square footage, two stories? Um, or is that uh, looking at the, just the uh, footprint of the proposed addition? The 1,100 square feet would be just the garage, and the addition portion on the top is about 600 square feet. So essentially, you're asking for a special permit 
for an addition that includes a garage that uh, amounts to uh, a bit over uh, 1,700 square feet. That's how I, I see it mathematically from you know, the totality of what's proposed. Well, I was under the impression. Well, I was under the impression the special permit was only because the garage exceeds the eight hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's correct. It's specific to the garage being over eight hundred and fifty square feet. So you could put a three thousand square foot addition on the back of your house, but only eight hundred and fifty of those feet could be a garage, unless you came to get this type of approval. Okay, sorry. I mean, there, there could potentially be other things that would trigger in terms of, you know, coverage or something else, but yeah. I mean, he, he's not here for the addition. He's here for the, the square footage of the garage exceeding 850 square feet. Okay, so the, so to clarify again, uh, the proposed, uh, uh, you know, garage part of this uh, project um, amounts to uh, a bit over 1,100 square feet, of which, uh, if uh, he would be in compliance with the regulations without the permit, he could uh, have a, a garage addition of 800 square feet. So. What he's really asking for is a um, is a special permit for the you know roughly 300 additional square feet of garage space. Is that a, is that an, uh, 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 an accurate way of looking at the application? That's right, Tom. Mm. The last okay. bay is the last bay is 310 square feet. Which yeah, is, uh, the the excess over what's permitted as of right is 250. Okay. All right. So my, my point is that it, you know, 250 sounds a lot less, you know, egregious than, you know, than 250 square feet. So I'm glad for the clarification. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have, I have a question. <clears throat> Sure. Denise, maybe, sure. maybe I'll ask you first on this. Uh, this 850 limit for the garage, is that uh, town-wide or is it per zone? Town-wide. It's town-wide. So the maximum size anywhere in the town is 850, regardless of the zone, correct? That's correct. So I've seen uh, garages, I think three-car garages in other parts of the town. Are those all special permits then? I mean, we've we've definitely had this conversation over the years um, because, yeah, I mean, every time anybody wants a three car garage, they have to come to a special permit through the Planning and Zoning Commission, <laughs> unless it was part of an approved subdivision. Um, you know, so any existing lot that's looking to upgrade or anything like that, they, they have to come before the commission. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess my, my uh, point is that I don't think this is a precedent. I mean, there's, there's definitely other, not. Yeah, there's other three car garages all over town that I've seen. Uh, and, and the next question would be uh, massing. Is, is, it, is it too much for, for this particular structure? in this particular area. And I, I went there as well. I think the way the land is situated and because it's mostly in the back, or it is really all in the back actually. Uh, I, don't, I don't think in my opinion, massing is an issue. So uh, I, I don't, personally, I don't, I don't think that this is a, a problem uh, for this area. Uh, and the additional 300 square feet is basically one bay, right? Because most garages are twenty by twenty, that they're about four hundred square feet. So it's 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 a little bit less than one full bay, of, of a third garage, is really what he's asking for, you know. So I I understand. Okay, and I think um, just for the record, at the end of the day, um, I did include uh, 
uh, correspondence from one of the neighbors um, in favor of the application. Okay, yeah, I saw that. Hey, hey this is yeah, David Drake. Yeah. Oh. Hey, I'm Pete's comp. Pete, I'm just, if you look at a 20 foot by 40 foot, it's actually a bigger addition. That's a three or four bay garage right there, 20 by 40. I mean, this is really big, more power to it, but am I wrong? I mean, a 20 by 40 garage would be uh, all a, of three bays, <laughs> right? A standard, a standard garage, modern garage, because of the big SUVs we're driving these days, is, is really 20, 24 by 24. That, that's a comfortable size garage. For single, for, for single door garage? Really, huh? Yeah. 24 for, feet for, wide. Yeah, for lot because we have a lot of large vehicles these days, you know. Yeah. So twenty four by twenty four is recommended. I I did some research to see what are they recommending these days for a single bay. Uh, twenty by twenty is the minimum they would recommend for a single bay. That's why I said he's actually asking a little bit less than a minimum uh, single bay, okay. additional to a two car garage. Yeah, because I'm thinking my garage is a two bar, a two bay and it's good size. I. I'm thinking I got two eight foot garage doors in the front out of the eight foot. I'm just saying 20 by 40 is a good size. <laughs> That's yeah. a good size garage. So I'm adding on for three or four bays or whatever. But anyways, more, more power to them. I think it looks fine for me. Yeah, I, yeah I think it looks fine too. Yeah. His middle bay is a foot, foot wider. Plan. No, it looks good. Uh, um, actually, I, I believe um, it wouldn't affect anything as far as the... Um, construction goes, but all three bays would probably be 10 foot. It helped with the support and it actually aesthetically looked better. So, and I also have a huge truck. It's a, I have a huge Dodge Ram. So that was the reason to do the 10 foot bay. And I also went a foot deeper. So instead of the 24, which is standard, I went 25. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Right. And you have columns in between each one of the, the doors there. I assume you have to have some sort of columns in there, right? Inside the garage? Yeah. No, it's all truss. Oh, There's no of course. Oh, that, that'll be convenient. Yep. Well, that was the reason. It just, it seemed like it, why cram yourself if you're pulling in there and you got to, you know, you can't open the door. So if I have a 40, 44 foot garage, I want to be able to open the door. I mean, it's yeah. like a basketball court. <laughs> Take it. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it, my, my brother actually did, he did 38 by 42. And wow. I actually went to his house and I pulled my truck into his three, it's a three car garage and his, I mean, his is obviously considerably deeper, but it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's definitely a big garage, but I also have the stairs to the addition inside the garage. So of the 1100 right. square feet, okay. four, uh, you know, four foot of that is actually the stairwell. It, it looks like you've gone pretty far with these drawings. Uh, I mean, you must have hired an architect and they detailed out. So uh, it took a little bit of a risk, right? Doing all this work uh, without knowing if we would approve this. Yeah, well, I did the drawing to make sure, that, well, I wanted to make sure that I could afford this. It wasn't gonna be some, uh, you know, <clears throat> half a million dollar uh, garage. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> my friend at Just Designs actually did the, the layout and then I did have, um, Peter Gillespie suggested I do a plot plan, which I did. Mm -hmm. So um, I had the plot plan done to make sure that the um, um, it didn't encroach on my uh, neighbor to the left. And then we also um, had an engineer look it over to make sure there was no um, water runoff or any issues as far as that goes. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, I saw Tony perk up when you said half a million dollar garage. Oh. <laughs> Tony, you want to park your car over here? So if we tell you, so if we tell you, you have to take a foot off, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Huh? You change all the drawings. <laughs> um, actually, you know, it probably wouldn't. If I had to take a foot off, it probably wouldn't. It probably wouldn't cost much to um, for him to redo it. It would just, well, it would shorten the deck. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Um, anybody else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? Uh, as Denise noted, there was one piece of correspondence from Bill and Amanda Drew at 340 Walcott Hill Road. So if you're looking at looking at this house from Walcott Hill Road, these are the people on the right who are going to be seeing the garage in the driveway, uh, indicating that they're the abutters. They reviewed the plans and do not have any objection. Is there anyone else in the public that wants to comment on this application or has any questions? 
Anybody in the public? Okay. Uh, if not, any final questions, comments from uh, the commission? Any last words from the applicant? Uh, I have none. All right. Um, someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? A motion to close, Mr. Chairman George. Okay. Second. All right. Motion by George, second by Mike. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. All right. Uh, does somebody want to make a motion? I'll take a crack. Okay. Um, I move uh, that application 3009-21-Z uh, be approved as uh, submitted. Okay. Second by George. Second? All right. Motion by Tom. Second by George. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Uh, next item, 3.3, .3, public hearing 301021Z, David Azule seeking a special permit in accordance with Section 52, permitted uses of the Weathersfield zoning regulations, to modify application number 206520Z at 1199 Silosine Highway. So if there's anyone here on behalf of the applicant, uh, could you just identify yourself by name and address and let us know what you want to do. David, do you want to start? Hi, good evening. Um, my name is uh, David Azulay, and I'm here tonight with uh, Jeff Lebeau, Jeffrey Lebeau, who is the uh, site engineer and civil engineer was assigned to this uh, project. Just to put into, into perspective, um, we got approved for, for this uh, use already, uh, I would say like uh, six months ago for a daycare center. This is a total of 15,500 uh, square feet building on 1199 Silas Dean Highway. We got approved already for the daycare center that is occupying around 11,000 square feet. Uh, we didn't have at the time any confirmed tenant for the second space. So the, the basically the board advised to come back once we have a confirmed tenant. Uh, we already have a confirmed tenant for the second Spain space that is going to occupy around 4,100 square feet. Uh, and after speaking with Denise, uh, we we told to to come tonight to get uh, in front of or before the planning and commission commission before planning and zoning commission. Sorry about that. For for approval for the second space. Great, David. Okay. So do you want me to introduce myself and then continue with the parking analysis? Yeah, that, that would be good. So, yes, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff LeBeau. I work as a licensed professional civil engineer with Freeman Companies out of Hartford, 36 John Street in Hartford. Um, we were hired by David um, a few weeks ago to analyze the second use for him to the previously approved special permit for a daycare use at 1199 Silestine Highway. And his second use, as he had just mentioned, is for a recreational center. Um, I believe there'll be trampoline in there and ball pits and also a room to host birthday parties. Um, so the space is 4,100 square feet. And again, we said it's recreational uh, activity, gym use. There's gonna be one to two employees uh, during the weekdays. The hours of operation for the second use will be Monday through Friday, uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or on the weekends, it can be, you can book by a special appointment. Um, David's previously approved use are gonna, the daycare center is gonna operate from the hours of Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. So 
David hired us to do a parking analysis and we did present a table, a letter with a, with a, uh, a breakdown of the parking generation from the Weathersfield parking regulations, as well as a comparison to the ITE trip generation rates, just, just for comparison purposes. And the, uh, the more conservative use is, is the Weathersfield regulations. So what we extrapolated, and I can share this to the screen if you guys wanted to look at the letter, is that I don't, unless you guys have had a chance to review it yet? I don't know. Do you want me to do a share screen? If you want to share it, you can share the screen. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Just, just, just so you can see uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. Let's see. Let me make sure I got. Now I just got to make sure I'm sharing the right thing here. Oh, I got too many, I got too many PDFs up here. Hold on. Where's the letter? Hmm. Oh, here it is. Let me see if this works. Um, can you guys see that letter? Is that um, yeah. on the shared screen right now? Okay, oh, yes. so, yes. so this was the analysis that uh, we performed for David to basically show that the current site plan that was approved uh, in January uh, la uh, last month uh, showed 50 parking spaces. And then the question was, well, what's the second use gonna be and can this parking lot handle it? So based on what I just described to you guys, as far as the separate, uh, it's gonna be the same overall owner, but different uh, times and different operations. Um, we extrapolated that out in the table. So you see use one for the daycare, this extrapolates out, this, this accounts for the total occupants, which the breakdown is, um, and these are the max, max uh, build out, if you will, uh, 160 students and up to 24 employees. So that generates 46 spaces. So again, that's less than the, than the um, 50. And then the use two, which will operate on the off hours from the other operation is um, the 4,100 square feet, extrapolating this out at the five spaces per thousand gives us 21 spaces. So essentially they're not both gonna concur at the same time because that, and that would be like six, 67. So our professional opinion is that his parking currently on the approved zone plan works, but we wanted to make sure we got concurrence from, from this commission and answer any other questions that may come up with this special permit for the um, recreational use. David, was there anything else you wanted to add? You're on mute. Famous, the famous words. <laughs> Yes, so just like that, uh, we are going to finish the first space, the Baker Center, by February 15th. Uh, we were required to put a ramp in order to get our CEO, and that's going to be done by February 15th. Uh, and we're waiting for your approval to start uh, construction on the, on, the second, on the second space. And all of the other conditions of the initial approval have been satisfied? Correct. Okay. Right. The, the main thing is that obviously the, the, planning and, and, uh, the planning and zoning board, they, they couldn't approve the second use before knowing what the second year was going for. At the time, Peter Gillespie suggested that like, why don't you get a confirmed tenant and then you come back to us in order to approve it. We had like uh, four or five offers for the second space, uh, mainly for restaurant chains. We didn't want to go into that direction. We want our complex to be uh, for children and for any activities related to children. And then we had the opportunity to have like juniors for the Olympic team but the ceilings were like not high enough. So then the tenant uh, agreed with us that like it would be a great space for them, even though it's gonna be a separate space. I mean, there's a demising wall, 
to be for uh, birthday parties and like extra activities after the normal hours of operation of the daycare center. Uh, so the kids can like enjoy and also like be part of the community uh, in, in, the same, in the same building. Okay. So I guess just to kind of wrap up the parking, the, the use of this portion of the building will either be by the existing daycare students during the hours that that's open or any other hours will only be when the daycare is closed so that, you know, essentially there's no parking conflict or additional parking requirements. Correct. Okay. That is yeah yeah that is correct. That is normally is going to be for for students uh, that are like going to be part of the daycare center, but it's not. Uh, it, it can be more than that, especially in the weekends for birthday parties. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I, I guess just what I wanted to confirm was that you weren't going to be having the daycare and occupying those required spaces and then having you know, birthday parties going on at the same time by people unrelated to the daycare center where that's where you really run into the problem with the yep. availability of spaces. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. David, David and I talked about that potential conflict. If they happen at the same time, you potentially could have that peak where you would need more, but um, that they're setting up their tenant agreements so that they're not going to coincide. Okay. All right. Just Anybody here. on the commission have questions, Peter? Yeah, I have, I, have a, I have a question, if I could, uh, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, so uh, it sounds like uh, you've allowed about a half hour of separation between the two uses. And, and I don't know if that was a, um, a judgment call on your part. I'm talking to the civil engineer who did the analysis. If that was a judgment call on your part, or if that's just for operational purposes, that's how it was decided. I guess my question is, is a half hour sufficient between <clears throat> one activity stopping and the other activity starting? You know, some people stay late, some people come early. Is that overlap? Did you consider that in your analysis? I'll be honest, we did not. Um, the operational consideration came from the tenant as far as how they perceived um, potential use for this uh, activity for the second use. And they, they determined that a half an hour would be enough time. Um, just one kind of thing to kind of add in there. The first use, it really is kind of over, um, it's kind of over parked, if you will, in the sense that it's daycare. So it's not driving age. Uh, and we're extrapolating out the formula based on 184 occupants. So that was another consideration as far as perceived conflict. We felt, oh, we have plenty of room because you're not really going to have 46. Every daycare student isn't going to necessarily have a driver that's parked. Most of the transient operations are a drop off and they're there maybe five or 10 minutes, you know, picking up a kid or a couple kids, dropping them off. Um, so we felt there was enough um, conservative. Uh, built into it. But to answer your question specifically, I had no decision in the half an hour. I mean, it could be back to back. As far as I'm concerned, I think it would still work well, or it could be like an hour separation. Maybe the applicant can address that since, since you've seen how the daycare operates. So what does it look like? I mean, at six o'clock, are most cars out of there or are they just coming? How, how does the flow work between six and 6.30? Correct, uh, very good question. The, the flow starts to go down after 5.30 p.m. So it slows down after 5.30 p.m. and then 6 p.m. So from 6 p.m. in my experience with the, with the other like two that I've seen, in, in the past, uh, from 6 to 6.30 p.m., it's like or 6.30 or actually it's 6 because it's between 6 and 6.30 to 6.30 to 7. So that half an hour, but really it's almost an hour, uh, then it's enough uh, space or time in, in order to slow down for, for the 7 to 9 p.m. That have in mind that like 
I, we don't, I don't foresee a lot of people coming from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. in order for the full uh, parking to be occupied. And then the other point, it's, it's all, it's, we're talking about a daycare center and daycare center activities. So mostly it's going to be drop off and pick up that takes five minutes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, you know, it's not like a place of employment where everybody works the fixed hours from, you know, nine to exactly six and the, some of them will be gone long before then. Um, uh, George here, I got a question. Yep. Um, a bunch of questions. Uh, see, any outdoor activity planned at all? No. Uh -oh. No? Okay. So therefore, there's no noise that no, could affect the name. Yeah, you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Well, I think that the uh, I'm, I'm concerned about the neighbors outdoor. across the street because we've dealt with this site a couple of times in the past. And uh, there are a couple of things that bo would bother them, and I'm going to ask about both of them. The hedge had a spacing in it at one point. Has that been corrected? Denise can probably answer that, I guess, too. Well, that was the, um, that was a condition on our approval for the daycare was that they fixed the head. Right. And, and that's been corrected, Kerr. Is that, that true? Because you said everything had been from the previous. So prior to a CO, they will have to um, correct that. Okay. Thank you, Denise. And um, so no outdoor activity, you say. And... Uh, any and you don't see any noise issues then uh it, it where where is the drop-off point behind the building from the silo steam not up front right well i i'm i'm only uh because the first use was already approved i guess you're asking for the second use Oops. correct well, yeah, yeah, how it relates and where the, the, are they coming in the same location yeah. that the previous people are, which is in the back, north, it'd be the yes. north, uh, west corner, I guess. Right? I, um, I, I, I guess so. Yeah, correct. Area. It's in the back. That's going to be the entrance for the second space. Okay. And there's no problem getting cars in there and parked. Is that correct? Around the uh, Santana, the building to the south. I don't yeah, believe yeah, there yes. is. Correct. That's so uh, correct. Do is say yes. There's no, no there's not. Yeah. The... <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, yes. I'm just asking. No. I, want to, I want you to go on record saying it. Yes. I, yeah. You're talking internal. Is that no, correct? I, internal circulation to, to drop off and pick off and pick up in the back? Yeah. I mean, yes. Actually, it's adequate. Could come in the front of that building. Correct. Is that ever open? Yeah. Or, that was we have 24. We have a driveway there that has um, been approved 24 feet. That is that is adequate. Out back or around Correct. the building. Okay. Yes. Okay. I I was just asking, yes. do people of course. drop off out, out front then? That's really my other Yeah, question. for the daycare. Okay. Correct. So the two uses, the use, the daycare use would is going to be up front. And there's parking spaces um, where they can park and then walk their child to the to the front or drop them off right at the steps or there's a new concrete ramp with a switchback so that so daycare drop off is at the front and then the um activity recreational center drop off is in in the rear uh that's that's good on that um so you don't plan on any noise because you're not having any outdoor activity so we don't have to worry about the neighbors on that one have you had any neighbor neighbor complaints on the existing operation? Uh, the facility isn't open yet, George. Oh, it isn't. The uh, the regular facility isn't No, open. It's, and, it's not. And they're asking for the new one. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, I thought it was. Um, so I will say that there are no complaints. Right, right, Rich. That's right. The other, the other not thing is, I noticed here, <laughs> there, there was a, a bridge across the brook. What's that all about? 
And was that approved? Is it supposed to be built? Or is it something that somebody might build someday, but probably won't? I can't answer that. And the only reason you can, it came mm. up in the last hearings and when I was on them a few years ago. And uh, it and it was stuck in there and I saw it in the material and uh, wondered what it was all about. Uh, I know it was a nice idea because there used to be one and it got destroyed in one of the uh, floods there five, 10 years ago, maybe now, 15, I don't know. And uh, I was just wondering if there is ever any consideration of such a connection. I wouldn't think it was, but I wanted to ask. And Denise, do you know anything about that? I mean, I, I, I don't think that that's been something that's been a consideration of recent uh, past anyways, especially with, um, you know, the, the Borden across the street and uh, uh, Porter and Chester just recently. Um, I, I don't recall that being part of the discussion. Okay, I wouldn't think it was, to say it through. But I, I don't know, and that's why I was asking. And uh, someday somebody might build it, but uh, it appears like this is not gonna come about at this site as, as, as one of the requirements, or no what I care to ask for them to do it. Um, okay, I think that's my questions. Uh, okay, I'm done, thank you. Okay, thank thanks, you. George. Um, anybody else? Yeah, I have a quick question. I'm looking at the layout of the uh, trampoline center. Um, is this the final fit out plan? Because you mentioned birthdays. And when I look at the space, unless it's all catered food, there's no sinks other than the yeah. bathroom, so forth and so that, on. That's, what... that's correct. Okay. Yeah, so David and I confirm that. Yeah. So it has to be all pre prepared food. So there's okay. no uh, sinks or kitchens or kitchenettes. Yeah, the, so the birthday party room or function cross-functional room is mm -hmm. really just for pre, you know, catered or pre-prepared stuff that people bring in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, there will, there will be a bathroom, no kitchen. Yep. Or a kitchenette. Okay. Anybody else on the commission have questions for the applicant? All right. If not, is there anyone in the public with a question or comment on this? Don't see anybody. All right. Any last questions for the applicant? Any last comments from the applicant? I'm good. Uh, I'm good thank you. Okay. All right. There's nothing else. Somebody want to make a motion to close the hearing? I'm going to move to Mr. Chairman George. The I'll second. The, uh, public hearing. All right. Motion by George. I didn't catch who made the second and no yellow boxes. That was me. Okay. All right. Motion by George, second by Peter. Close the hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Someone want to make a motion on the application itself? Mr. Chairman George here. I'll make a motion to approve uh, application uh, 301-021-Z. Okay. All right, motion by George to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, second by Dave Drake. Um, any discussion? I, I guess if the not, only, yep. the, the only uh, Go ahead. I, should, I should ask this question. I'm just curious, what, when is operation gonna start here? Uh, I understand it's not operating yet. When, when is it at all expected to start working? Um, we want to, or we're aiming to get our CO by February 15th uh, to February 25th. 
uh, again, like uh, our GC is, is working closely with the building officers. And then after that, we get the CO. Normally, the tenant, it's told me that they have 45 days to get their license. So if you extrapolate by the first week of April, April 7th to April 10th, we should be open to the public for the first use. For the second use that we're discussing today, I, I don't, it's TBD. Like uh, we're like, I, I wanted to get approved, approved first. And then like after that, we're gonna start now construction and, and we're gonna work on, on developing the second space. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, does anybody else have any uh, comments? If not, uh, Rich, uh, all in favor. Rich yep. the only thing that I wanted to add is um, in the motion, maybe to include the conditions of the previous approval of application number 206520Z. Oh, okay. So that they don't build this and not that. And That's right. Skip the conditions. Right. Right. George, do you, are you okay with that, George? Yes, I am. All right. And Peter, you were the second. Are you okay with adding those conditions? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, they were on the second page of Denise's memo um, that we got today. All right. Thanks for bringing that up. Anything else anybody has? If not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I opposed abstentions. Okay, motion carries. Congratulations. Good luck. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very time. much. Really appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you other, very much. Other business. There's no other business. Uh, we have we have minutes from December twenty first. Yes, and Mr. Chair, um, I just wanted to introduce before we go on, uh, we, we did just um, hire a new recording secretary, Cindy Sheehan. She's on with us this evening. Um, she got together the um, minutes of the um, first meeting in January for us and um, I don't know that she has anything to say, but I just wanted to welcome her and um, and thank her um, for getting these together for us. Thank Great. you. Oh, yeah, thanks it. very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we're really happy to have to you. Working with you. Thank you. All right, so we have minutes for December 21st and January 19th. Um, you want a motion together or separate, Richard? Um, either way is fine with me. I don't... All right, I, I read both of them. I, I'll move, I'll make a motion to approve both the December and subsequent uh, minutes. December twenty one, January nineteenth. Right. All right. Motion by Peter, second by George. The only thing I noticed was somewhere in one of them they referred to Ryan as Commissioner Ryan instead of Commissioner Allard. Um, but that that was the only thing I saw. Yeah, I don't know. I'll check but, that. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else have any comments? If not, uh, yes, I do. Just a moment on uh, the January nineteenth uh, minutes. Uh, I'm listed as as being absent. I just want to go on the record that. Uh, and two out of the last uh, three uh, planning zone commission meetings, I attempted, uh, was successful only once in accessing the meeting, but I have attempted uh, to attend all of the meetings and for, I guess, reasons of uh, uh, technology uh, problems uh, have been denied entry into the meeting. So I would be abstaining on the, uh, January 19th uh, minutes approval. I believe I was here for the uh, uh, December uh, 21st meeting. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Who was that, please? Um, it doesn't show a name. Sorry? Who was that? Speaking? Tom Dean. Commissioner Dean. Thank you. Hey, Rich, and, Tony Homicky here. I was not in attendance, so I'll abstain also. I think you still have a quorum for both both uh, meetings, so it should not be a problem. Yeah, this is yeah. Dave Ed this is Dave Ed Edwards. I didn't was not on the December 21st meeting either. Well, you know, as odd as it seems, you don't have to have been at a meeting to approve the minutes. Okay. <laughs> well, I, just said that, I read them. Mr. Chair. I read I'll approve next month's meeting then. <laughs> all right. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And abstentions, we have. Tony, Dave Edwards, and uh, Tom Dean. I'm sorry that Commissioner Dean was having technical issues, but I'm glad he's here tonight. Uh, anything on staff reports? Richard, following on that comment you made about difficulty getting in, is there any uh, news on when we will get together live again? Maybe Denise, do you have any comment on that? No, no update. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Well, I mean, I, uh, George is anxious too to get to real meetings again. Yeah, yeah I think uh, unfortunately we had we had a window of time and that window slammed shut with the yeah, Omicron sorry. variant, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll be back with the opportunity. And you know, we we kind of talked about um, you know the possibility of if there were you know once we get into a better place on on COVID and everybody feels more comfortable, you know, for for meetings where we didn't have much of anything on the agenda, we could still do them remotely just so that you know people wouldn't have to drive for a 45 minute meeting um but where ones where we anticipated significant involvement from the public or you know plans to be looked at or or presentations of any compl complexity that you know those those might be ones that we would try to do in person i guess you know the only downside to that is that it gets more confusing if you have every third meeting remotely and all the others in person or vice versa, um, you know, and. The only other issue I, is that, it, you know, and we're really not at this point, but the last time that we did end up going um, to live meetings, um, you know, Bonnie was really looking for uh, all of the membership to be comfortable. You know, so if there's one person that really isn't, then, you know, it, it makes it tough to, to oh, not I, accommodate I, them. So are you going to be taking a vote or? We're not at that point yet, it? George. I, I okay. definitely, I probably. You think you will be. At least the next meeting in February. And if not the first meeting in March, I don't see us going in person. No, I, I would tend to agree. And, you know, I, I think the other thing too that makes it complicated is that town hall or the council chambers is not really well equipped for a hybrid meeting, you know, where we could have, you know, seven members of the commission there in person with the applicants and then, you know, and two or three of the members of the commission zooming in, it's sort of, unwieldy at this point yeah that would be unwieldy right uh, the part the, the, sorry I, I was just going to ask another question to denise uh, while we're on staff reports uh this is the second time that uh, the uh, applicant has moved uh, this is lucky news uh do you know why um why? I mean, partially, I believe it's just a scheduling conflict with the applicant. Um, they also have not responded to the staff comments. Um, 
I do anticipate them being on the next agenda. They're going to have to submit um, an extension for the time frame to open the hearing yeah. at this point. Um, you know, and we are in in terms of my other staff reports, it is going to cause a little bit of a backlog going forward. Uh, the next meeting, I already have, you know, several applications pending. And then this one that I was hoping to get at least partially through uh, this evening. So the next meeting, um, we have an application pending for, uh, it, it was a zoning violation at 15 Crest Street for a snowmobile trailer. We also have an application pending for one box truck uh, vehicle at 61 Arrow Road. Um, and then also Lucky Lose being held over. Um, and then uh, yesterday I did get a formal submission for 657 Silestine, which is the former um, Rite Aid. The, Institute of Cosmetology recently purchased the property and they're looking to uh, have a change of use from retail to cosmetology. And that's scheduled also for the, the 15th meeting. Why, why Denise, why is Lou uh, asking to have this put off? He's not trying to avoid us, uh, is he? on this matter? Because he um, can't operate his music without our approval on this, right? He he submitted the application because his application expired in December. So he was submitting it in response to the expiration. Um, and then at that point, he and his attorney um, were both out of town during the holidays. Um, and then, you know, they, the first meeting, they they were not prepared to respond to staff comments, and um, you know the the business is closed typically until March, anyways. I I don't think that Lucas is in town, but I do believe that um, his attorney was prepared to represent him. So, you know, I'm not sure what the specific conflict was for this evening. Um, but okay. Thank you. Right. Richard, I have a quick question to Denise. The, uh, the planning and zoning meeting on the, on, uh, March 24th will be in person at the Aquaturf. Are there any celebrity lawyers <laughs> in Weathersfield going to be there giving a presentation or is it just a routine meeting? As far no, as I'm just going to go there to eat. I'm not making any presentations. Oh, good. Okay. I'll, I'll I mean, consider it might going. be our first in-person meeting. <laughs> okay. Good. I'll consider going. Thank you. Okay. Tony, what yeah, is that, I, I, what, I, I'm, I'm not following. What, what, what did you just say? There's a dinner meeting or something? Uh, yeah, so the theater, Connecticut right? Federation of Planning and Zoning Officials, they host a annual meeting at the Aquaturf. Um, so they will be hosting uh, this year is the first time in, you know, three years now that they're going to be hosting it in person um, uh, or, or they're intending to do so at the end of March. So if anybody's interested in um, attending, um, let me know and I will register you. Um, and I'm also going to look to see if there's anybody to nominate for any of the uh, lifetime awards on the commission. Well, I it's George you. here. I will be going. Okay. Hold me down. <laughs> I think he's a good candidate for lifetime, right? I think he may have gotten a lifetime Probably true, times bro. two. I think he got three of them already, George. I know. I think so too. Yeah, I think he got two lifetimes and a 12 on top of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have them posted at home. I must have somehow lost them. <laughs> yeah. All right, George, retire. I'll sign you up. Thank you. They're going to retire your nameplate into the rafters in the Hall of Fame. So. <laughs> 
probably have the third generation who runs this operation show up pretty soon. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, for any for anybody who's who's new on the commission or hasn't been to this before, it's um, um, it's like <laughs> basically the only benefit you get as a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission is uh, you know a, a full meal at the Aqua Turf and uh, um, social engagement with uh, other members of the commission, which you know some people see as a good thing. And it does Plus actually, it, it looks like a pretty good sure. agenda, pretty relevant to what we're speaking about. Um, I knew, I yeah. know that one of the issues that they're talking about are the adult use cannabis mm -hmm. establishments. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I'd like yeah, to see many of good. our commission members present because of those kind of things and that kind of training this time. Normally, uh, the speakers are not always on the mark as far as being helpful to commission members uh, on their duties and, and sort of a training thing. And this may be the case this time. So, so it's the end of March. Is there a specific date, Denise? I didn't catch it. Yes. 24th. Oh. Thursday, the 24th. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, and, and to also um, go back to the, the reference to training, one of the things that passed the legislature last year was, you know, mandatory training for members of planning and zoning commissions. And uh, Bar Association, UConn, and a couple other organizations have been working on putting together you know, kind of outlines. And we've also been trying to uh, come up with some ways to, to deliver the training um, in a way that is user friendly, but uh, kind of a work in progress at this point. All right. Um, Anybody yeah, else? Sure. The only thing that yeah. I wanted to add, um, and it, we don't have a formal application pending, but I do anticipate probably mid March or the beginning of April. Um, I met this afternoon for a pre-application for 1862 Berlin Turnpike. That's the uh, former Atlas Tile Plaza where Pollo Guapo is. Uh, Joe Sulo and Kevin Johnson, uh, Peter Alter. They're looking to um, do a facade improvement to the property and um, locate a Starbucks drive-through in the former Atlas Tile Plaza. Um, so they do have to go to ZBA. I anticipate they'll be on their agenda at the end of this month um, and then work their way through planning and zoning and wetlands um, at the end of next month. Where is that, Denise? It's the former Atlas Tile. Oh, yeah. The Berlin okay. Turnpike. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Um, anybody else have anything they want to uh, discuss before we adjourn? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion made, Mr. Chairman. By George, to adjourn. I'll second. All right. okay. motion, motion by George, second by Peter. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 See everybody. Opposed? So I just wanted to right. say maybe check out the rare reminder at the end of the week. There might be a little um, section on George Oikel. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, boy. Uh -oh. <laughs> all right. I have to read that? <laughs> I thought they took the police blotter out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very well said. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take care.